Um, in climate science, for good reasons, we do measurements in Kelvin. So the mean surface temperature of the Earth at the moment is 288 Kelvin. Now, without any greenhouse gases, it would be 255 Kelvin. Now, this is all official climatology. And so the difference between those two figures is 33 Kelvin. And that is what's called the natural greenhouse effect. That's the effect of having greenhouse gases or not having them. Now, that means that the maximum possible value of the contribution of feedbacks to today's temperature as it is now, before we amplify it, but not so much, is 33 Kelvin, the entire natural greenhouse effect. We could pretend, for the sake of an absurd argument, that it could be as much as 33 Kelvin as just feedbacks. That means that the feedback fraction, which is the fraction of the uh, today's surface temperature, that is represented by the contribution from feedback is 33 over 288, okay. which is less than 0.12, less than one eighth. Right. Now, the official estimate of the value of the feedback fraction, which is used in the calculation of the final amount of warming you get from CO2, is that it's somewhere between 0.25 and 0.75. But I've just proved to you that the absolute maximum that it could possibly be is 0.12. 0.12. And it couldn't be anything like even that. It couldn't be more, as much as half that. But so to say it was 0.25 is an exaggeration of 100%. That's right, and, and worse as you go up the scale. So, uh, for, therefore, we know that their estimate of the feedback fraction is way, way, way too high. But there's a further aspect of this error that they make. When they are doing the feedback calculations, they feed into the feedback loop only the direct change in temperature caused by CO2, which is 1.2 Celsius degrees. Mm -hmm. That's the official figure. I think it's less than that, but I can't prove it, so we'll use that figure. Now, that 1.2 Celsius degrees is what they feed in when they should feed in 288 Celsius degrees. So they're feeding in a figure which is 1 250 of what it should be. That leads to them overstating the oh feedback goodness. factor by, on average, about a factor of 100. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so that is why they then Murder. get this very exaggerated amount of warming at the other end. Exactly if you do it correctly, you also have to allow for the fact that yeah, feedbacks well. are operating in today's climate already, he said, uh, and that part of today's temperature, maximum 33 degrees of it, is contributed by feedbacks. And that therefore you have to do the calculation by going back to the temperature as it would have been before today's feedbacks operated. And then you calculate from there and you can do that. Right. You what year would that take the, you back to? The contribution to, well, it just it means it takes about 255 degrees effectively. Well, I'm going to see if we can get uh, a most. Um, so, <coughs> or rather at minimum, that's what it would be. So the, the point then is that if you take the calculation back to there and then do it forward, the feedbacks are mostly acting on the pre-existing temperature, and only a tiny fraction of the feedbacks will be acting on the tiny fraction of that pre-existing temperature, which is represented by the increase in CO2. And so that means that feedbacks don't make any measurable difference to temperature once you add CO2 to the atmosphere. So if I add, if I double the CO2 in the atmosphere, Mm -hmm. and I increase the temperature directly in the atmosphere by 1.2 Celsius. Feedbacks, instead of increasing it to between 1.5 and 4.5, or 7 or 10 or 13 Celsius, it's still going to be about 1.2 Celsius. The feedbacks just don't make any measurable difference. And that is revolutionary, because the word feedback is measured, is, is mentioned, I should say, 1,000 times in the fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The last How do they one they define the word feedback? <laughs> feedback is where some fraction of the uh, input, or actually of the output of a, a, a circuit, in this case the climate, uh, is fed back and becomes part of the input and is then amplified by an amplifier and then it goes round and out to the other end. And the mathematics governing that very simple circuit are surprisingly complicated. And the uh, climate scientists have never understood it, and they use a very crude approximation to it, which, however, has these various mistakes in it. And it's because of those mistakes 
that they have ended up thinking that global warming could cause as much as three, four, five Celsius uh, of warming, when in fact it can only cause about one. That's it. Mm. Case closed. Uh, one other question then. 